Wednesday, January 27th, 2021, third week after the Epiphany evening meditation. Meditations are taken f- from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology. After faith in the presence of God, in nomen patria fili, spiritu sancti, amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided trinity, one God in three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage, which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that in the opinion of the world others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it that others may be chosen, and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be praised, and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may become holier than I provided, that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our evening meditation. Through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin, Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, Sum Benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus, Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, Or Pinobis peccatoribus, Nuc in hora mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria Filio, Spiritus Santo, Secret Erat in Principio, Nuc et Semper, and in Secula Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant that same spirit, that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Evening Meditation. The ingratitude of men made Jesus suffer most. We must also well understand here that the pains which Jesus Christ endured in his passion and the scourging and the crowning with thorns in the crucifixion, his agony and death, and in all other torments and ignominies which he suffered at the end of his life, he also suffered from the beginning. From the beginning of his life, he had always before his eyes the sad vision of all the torments he would have to suffer when about to leave this earth. And as, and as he predicted by the mouth of David, quote, my sorrow is continually before me. Psalm 37, verse 18. 
We hide from the sick man the knife or the fire with which he is to be cut or cauterized in order to regain his health. But Jesus would not have the instruments of his passion by which he was to lose his life that he might gain for us eternal life hidden from his sight. He desired always to have before his eyes the scourge, the thorns, the nails, the cross, which were to drain all the blood from his veins till he died of pure grief, deprived of all consolation. One day Jesus Christ was crucified appeared to Sister Mary Magdalene Orsini, who had been suffering a heavy affliction, affliction for a long time, to comfort her by the remembrance of his passion, and to animate her to bear her cross with patience. She said to him, But thou, my Lord, was only three hours on the cross, while I have suffered this pain for many years. Then our Lord from the cross replied, Ignorant creature that thou art, from the first moment that I was in the womb of Mary, I suffered all that I had afterwards to suffer in my death. Christ, says Novar Novarinus, even in the womb of his mother, had the impression of the cross on his mind, so that no sooner was he born than he might be said to have principality on his shoulders, quote-unquote, Isaiah 9, 6. So then, my Redeemer, throughout thy whole life, I shall find thee nowhere but on the cross. Lord, I find thee nowhere but on the cross. Yes, for the cross on which Jesus Christ died was ever in his mind to torment him. Even while sleeping, says Bellarmine, the sight of the cross was present to the heart of Jesus. Quote, Christ had his cross always before his eyes. When he slept, his heart watched, nor was it ever free from the vision of the cross. Unquote. It was, however, not so much the sorrows of his passion that saddened and embittered the life of our Redeemer, as the sight of all the sins men would commit after his death. These were the cruel executioners which made him live in continual agony, oppressed by such an overwhelming grief that it alone would have been enough to make him die of pure sorrow. Father Lessia says that the sight alone of the ingratitude of mankind would have been sufficient to make Jesus Christ die of grief a thousand times. The scourges, the cross, death itself were not hateful objects to him, but most dear, chosen, and desired by himself. He had offered himself spontaneously to suffer them. Quote, he was offered because it was his own will. Isaiah 53, 7. He did not live his, he did not give us his life against his will, but by his own election. He tells us by St. John, quote, I lay down my life for my sheep. John 10, 15. This was indeed the chief desire of his whole life, that the time of his passion should arrive so that the redemption of mankind might be completed. For this reason, he said on the night preceding his death, quote, with desire have I desired to eat this pash with you before I suffer. Luke twenty-two fifteen, And before this time arrived, he seemed to console himself by saying, quote, I have a baptism wherewith I am to be baptized, and how I am straightened until it be accomplished. Luke twelve fifty. I must be baptized with the baptism of my own blood, not indeed to wash my own soul, but those of my sheep, from the stains of their sins. And how ardently do I desire the arrival at the hour when I shall be bleeding and dead on the cross. St. Ambrose says that the Redeemer was not affected, quote, by the fear of death, but by the delay of our redemption. St. Zeno tells us Jesus Christ chose for himself the trade of a carpenter in this world. Quote, it is not the, the, this the carpenter. It is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary. Mark 6, 3. Because as carpenters are always handling wood and nails, it would seem that Jesus exercising this trade took pleasure in such things, seeing that they represented to him better than anything else the nails and the cross by which he willed to suffer. 
Thus, we see it was not so much the thought of his passion that afflicted the heart of our Redeemer as the ingratitude with which mankind would repay his love. It was this ingratitude which made him weep in the stable of Bethlehem, which caused him to sweat blood in his deadly agony in the garden of Gethsemane, which filled him with such sorrow that he says even that it alone was sufficient to make him die. Quote, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Matthew 26, 38. And finally, this ingratitude, it was which caused him to die in desolation on the cross. Concluding prayer, I give you thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay? That thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and grateful as I have been even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance in thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen de Patria, Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Have a blessed evening, O slaves of Mary.